you realize it's not just a film festival, but there's something else moving inside of us that we long for this, that those people who will be celebrated tonight have been deserving of it for so long. But here is the watering hole, ladies and gentlemen. We came to it tonight to get full. So every now and then, if you feel moved and you just want to say, mmm. So a lot of people came to Hollywood to be an actor, to be directors and writers. And I came because I wanted to see the reflection of my people. I wanted to see our stories. I wanted to see our vision. And I just wanted to see us. And I can tell you it has been a long struggle and the struggle's not over. But I can tell you the b -Herc in which we call ourselves the Black Hollywood Education and Resource Center has been here to help support emerging filmmakers that look like us. That's 24 years of bringing quality and diverse, powerful, thought-provoking programs, stories, and yes, honorees and filmmakers to the forefront. Truly wonderful Black Hollywood and Education and Resource Center is simply the best game in town. The Community Service Award. This year, it's being bestowed on a dynamic leader and an outstanding professional whose work has meant so much to so many people for so long. His name is Mr. Tim McNeil. He is the Vice President of Creative Talent Development and Inclusion at Disney ABC Television Group. Basically, ladies and gentlemen, it is programs such as this one that he and his team oversees that have helped obliterate the stereotype of what people of color can and cannot do in this business. Please join me in welcoming this year's Community of Service Award winner, Mr. Tim McNeil. You know, when I first started in this business um, back in the 1980s, I was often the, the, the first and the only person of color, of any color, in the room. And I feel very fortunate today that um, I work with a team of very diverse individuals uh, at a company that really um, uh, embraces diversity and inclusion and the work that we get to do every day is really an honor. Um, I finally have a seat at the table and I get to speak up for our representation and to make sure that uh, when um, projects are in development or um, there's a decision about who's going to direct the next film that I actually have a voice in that. And the two individuals I'm about to recognize with this year's President's Award they are givers, they are believers, they are visionaries. They are individuals who represent the best of our community. These two individuals are willing to give so much of themselves through the Los Angeles Brotherhood Crusade. They take young men, they take young women, and they introduce them to so many different arenas. Please welcome this year's 2018 President's Award recipients, Sharice Bremond Weaver and Mr. George Weaver. This is an emotional year for me as president of Brother Crusade. As Sandra mentioned, this is our 50th anniversary. Yesterday evening, I had the great pleasure to interview Ambassador James Joseph, who was the reason Brotherhood Crusade exists. He brought my father here from the Bay Area to organize Brotherhood Crusade. And to understand the why of how my father created this institution and to do this work with my amazing husband and my amazing team, some of the Brother Crusade staff are here this evening. It's just a joy to serve this community. The mission of Brother Crusade and the 3,000 young people that it serves and with this incredible staff and its fearless leader who was one of the most incredible women you'll ever meet in your life. That's what we love about Be Herc. It gives a voice to the voices in a medium where that voice can be heard and now people understand. He's the first African-American union location manager, which as we know, the first in anything related to our community means that despite any obstacle, he overcame them to become the first. And his impact can't be overstated with over four decades in the industry. His outstanding credits include groundbreaking and award-winning films such as Roots 2, The Color Purple, Shawshank Redemption, and Million Dollar Baby. Kakai secures the places where these films happen. His location management skills have led the way to such celebrated films to enter our hearts and minds. 
and I'm proud to join you in honoring him with BHRC's Lifetime Achievement Award. Please welcome Mr. Kakai Ampa. In 1995, the group of film um, commissioners from around the state put together a thing called the Colo Awards, uh, California on Location. I won the first um, feature location manager of the year, that year, 1995. Uh, it's been a great ride, and I mean, you know, you get a Lifetime Achievement Award, but you still haven't achieved all you want to in life. So, I, um, I've been producing uh, and directing some short films, one of which is in this, um, in this festival. So I just want to thank you all, it's been great, and uh, thank you very much. Uh, Greg and I are honored to be here to, pre to present tonight the Ivan Dixon Award of Achievement to the extraordinary Bobby Banks. Her talent in sound editing is peerless with over 38 years of service and 120 work, excuse me, 120 films to her credit, including Selma, Straight Out of Compton, Fate of the Furious, and August Osage County. She, she was um, president of the Motion Picture Sound Editors Guild for, over, for, for 10 years, which I think is longer than anybody else. Uh, <clears throat> and, and, and really, really uplifted the organization, turned it into something more than just an organization that would have a party once a year and give awards. She, they were having uh, uh, get-togethers and meets and different helping student scholarships because she's got that heart. As an, I should say, as an ADR supervisor, dialogue ADR supervisor, Bobby is in charge of all the dialogue for whatever film we work on. Uh, so that's all the production that's shot. For those of you who are not familiar with the process, uh, there's a production sound recorder who records it, gives us the sound, she uh, massages it and takes out all the ticks and pops. When you have a professional like Bobby, it's so well done, you just don't notice it. You know, it's been 38 years and uh, it's been a not easy, so easy journey. But yet I still knew that I was talented and. I deserved a seat at the table like everyone else. <clears throat> so I kept pushing and pushing and um, John Singleton gave me my first ADR supervising job on Poetic Justice along with uh, Greg. That was uh, our first teaming together. And I'm so grateful to him for that and also because he's been really loyal in hiring Greg and I as a team. You know, a lot of times we talk about being supportive of one another. We're on social media and we're this and we're that, but yet we don't hire. If you really believe in what you're saying, you give the opportunity to a diverse person. I was honored to be president of Motion Picture Sound Editors for eight years and I served on the board for 20. I was the first African-American and fourth woman in 65-year organization. And when I sit in here, it's like so, so emotional for me because I realize that I'm there to help other people come in. And that's so important because we have to give back. And several years ago, when I was president of the Beverly Hills Hollywood NAACP, there was a young man who was a student at the American Film Institute, David Massey. It was in 1992. And David was working on his thesis project at the AFI, and he said, Sandra, I don't have the money to complete my project. Can you guys help? And I said, oh my God, David, we'll do what we can. We ended up saying, writing to a lot of people, we raised about $30,000 for his project. And I can tell you after that film, David submitted it to the Academy and he became the first African-American to be nominated in the short film category. And several years ago, less than five, there was a young man out of USC named Ryan. You know who I'm talking about? Ryan who? Coogler. And he came to us and he said, hey, I'm completing two short films, can you help me out? And B. Herc said, we can definitely help you out. And we provided two scholarships to Ryan. That is why we're here, because we believe and we know 
that we have the talent in our community and we won't be denied. <laughs> And in this year that we celebrate the 50th anniversary where we lost Dr. King, and we think about a movement of people, we've got to think about that movement in every place that we exist. And so when we think about our honorees this evening, and that's the reason why we do this great day in Hollywood, it's because of them. It's because they've paved the way, they continue to pave the way. So I ask you to go out and tell somebody about their story and what you learned today. And so when we started this festival, one of the things we wanted to do was to make sure that we started recognizing young people and that we gave them an opportunity to tell their stories. And I'm going to ask all of our 2018 youth diversity filmmakers from Dorsey, from Hands of Hope, from Washington Prep, come on up. The value that we bring and the narrative and the way that we tell stories, you're not getting everywhere else. And so you can't just think that ignoring the black community is going to get you black people coming in. You get opportunities like this that you can taste, touch, and feel, and you can be up close, upfront, and personal with those who are making moves in the game, but they're not so far out of our reach where they don't spend time with us. Until we have the community, the media community, learn how to rally together and fight against the systematic um, divide, uh, we're going to continue to see the same old, same old things over and over again. And we can't be afraid to speak against the status quo. Uh, over the next two days, we're going to see some incredible films where you'll hear and see the voice of some amazing young people. So amazing to be here. I can't wait to see everyone's films, and I hope you guys all do a great job. My time here has been great. I really enjoy watching all the movies, and everything's been going well. I don't know the last time that I, I read Vanity Fair, and I don't pick those magazines up because very rarely do I see women that look like me or stories that interest me. And it's gonna take courage. It's gonna take not only courage, but it's going to take persistency and letting people know that we're tired of being at the back and we're tired of receiving less than everybody else is receiving. Black Panther just just blew right through that, that glass door. It was just really incredible to hear their stories and to know that not everything is linear, but there are many different paths to get there. And so the journey was, I think, the most incredible and memorable part of this panel for me. Don't sit there and worry about the end of the film. Don't worry about the beginning of the film. Worry about where you are. It's just like planning, but it, it's who it is. So the clothes tell a story and it really invokes and clothes take you back. You know, you can't just put anything on and do a period film from 1970 and go to Zara yeah. and say, well, that will work. Can, can you figure out that this, this is 1970s? No, it's the color, the style, the cut, the shape. So the clothes, you see it, you're like, oh, that's 1980s, that's the 80s. And then you see the hair change and the makeup change. You go out and you find the locations, you do the security as I was starting to talk about. If it's the government agency, you find out who owns that or who has that, what are their particulars. Uh, is it historic? What are the regulations for an historic site? In Amistad, we shot in Puerto Rico at uh, El Moro, which is a fort. And that's where the slave scenes were done. Well, we had we had actually nude people. And this is a big tourist site because all the, the, the boats that come in to San Juan. And we, you can't shut down a 
National Monument. But we, I was able to shut it down. <laughs> Our film is called The Best of Two Evils. And uh, we came out here to soak it all up like a sponge. You know, see some other inspired independent filmmakers and hoping to collab and network with the LA area. Yeah, it's crazy how we got picked up out here, but I really feel like it's genuinely like a focus and I'm like gaining and learning while we out here. And I don't know, love's been real since we've been out here. We all have nine to fives that's, that's funding our fields, most of us anyway. And uh, I think the imagination just needs to keep running and never lose that touch and just keep creating. If you can't afford movie magic, budgeting and scheduling, before they had that, they had a pen and a paper. Use your brain, identify what it is that you want and find a way to be a hustler. What is more important than the tool is the, is the skill, the craftsman uh, using the tool. Storyboards are what you really need to do to figure out how your shots are going to come together and what your shots are, what your coverage is. It's all about understanding the intention of what it is that you're trying to communicate because 90% of that stuff you can cut, so you don't need it. If you don't know where you're going to put that camera, even though they're going to change it, they're going to go stand somewhere else, you have to take that. It's your pledge process now. They have to know that you know what you're doing. When the opportunity came and Oprah Winfrey knocked, she was looking for somebody that really was an expert in the field in gospel music. You have to make sure your music is legal, people. Libraries are typically where a lot of music supervisors go because the music is already, already cleared. Pre cleared. And I realized that, wow, there is a divide. There is a great divide here amongst our own people, and I, as talent, didn't even realize it. There's, there's been a lot of companies in, in, in this industry that have always challenged how real the numbers were from black and brown viewers. Right. There should be some thought given to maybe educating black celebrities and artists yeah. so they know the real deal. We wanted to kind of touch on a couple topics that are kind of popular right now, specifically mental health in the black community. It was just amazing for me to work with Liz and with Valerie because these ladies are the troopers. I mean, they're, you guys are amazing. So the film um, is currently used in nursing schools. I actually am a, a faculty member at Pasadena City College Department of Nursing. I teach third semester. When I found out that it got accepted to this festival, I started posting on Facebook and Instagram and everything, and a lot of people responded about this epidemic that's going on. The opportunity came when I was having a meeting with Sandra Evers Manley, not about this at all. And um, she happened to mention uh, this piece that I shot. I mean, it was like probably like a two minute piece. And um, she asked me to kind of look at it, research it, see if there was anything going on with that. We have a lot of dedicated people who are on the front lines every day, working hard for these young folks, but not enough had changed. Because it really is a journey of service. Um, and then I looked for my great colleague <laughs> here, uh, who is incredibly talented. Um, she's an incredible cinematographer. She is an editor. She is a writer. And um, I knew that she had the right heart, because it takes heart to, uh, to do this, to get into this subject, because it really is the good, the bad, and the ugly. Um, we saw it all. Can we get it right for the kids? I've never been so nervous at a film premiere before. So it's heart-wrenching, um, it's gut-wrenching, and we, we try to give light and hope and, and show that there's the great potential to help these young people if more people will get involved with um, servicing them. You might think you have a shoot that day, but if that young person doesn't show up, then you're going to have to go home. When you're talking documentary, like. You, you know if you budgeted a film, you have a shoot day, and you lose that shoot day, you, you gotta pay the people who came out anyway. You lost your money, you don't have any more funds. So, you, you know, th those kind of challenges were really hard with this type of work. How did you get that trust so that they could be so personal? Getting their trust was huge. Jocelyn is, is a key in that, making the first initial contacts and getting the trust of the agencies and the kids. Because the agencies don't want us in there exploiting them and they definitely aren't gonna give us access to their kids if they think we're doing the wrong thing. So we spent a tremendous amount of time building the, those trust relationships. I said, what do you do? And she says, well, I'm a writer. 
And I said, well, you need to tell people that's what you do, because if you don't, they're going to keep you as a writer's assistant. So whatever's true in your heart, like I said, it's going to be social justice, because it's, cause that's what you want. So that's going to come out of you. It's going to ooze out of you without you even having to say it. If you want to go do a film, go do a film and stop sitting there making, asking people to listen to you. We have wonderful filmmakers and producers, people here that have been in this craft and been doing this for years that can lend their knowledge. Awesome, great films by so many writers and stuff with terrific uh, uh, voice and also so many filmmakers with terrific vision. So wherever you are around the globe watching this, you got to make it here to the S.E. Manley Short Film Festival, man. There's a place for you because you can do it. This festival proves that anything is possible, but you have to be willing to go for your goals.